एवरीबडी दिस इज रुद्र प्रधान इयर वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग इकोनोमेट्रिक्स टुडे वील कंटिन्यू विथ मॉडलिंग डायग्नोस्टिक्स एंड दैट टू अगेन विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू हाइड्रोस्क्रासीटी प्रॉब्लम इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हेव स्पेसिफिकली हाइलाइटेड दिस पर्टिकुलर कंपोनेंट इट्स ए कैंड ऑफ यू नो भाइरस इन द मॉडलिंग एनवायरमेंट and that to with respect to error tone and again that to with respect to error variance the requirement of classical linear regression modeling or the requirement of you know the use of ordinary least square mechanism is that error variance should be similar over the time or over the cross sectional unit but in reality you will find error variance cannot be similar in most of the instances because of you know various regions because uh, one of the str strongest region is that you know because of you know uh, the presence of outliers or over the time committing error will be at the at the minimum so as a result so there is high chance uh, the error variance may not actually same over the time so if you go by error learning modeling approach so the committing of errors usually in a kind of you know, declining trend so as a result there is a high chance the error variance cannot you know uh, same so there is a little bit you know uh, unequal and uh, we like to check whether it's a kind of you know uh, you know e equal variance or whether there is a kind of you know unequal variance and we have discussed in details in the last lecture and again so what will you do here econometrically we like to check because the last class we have given you the structure about the graphical you know inspection and the kind of you know visualization process so here we have standard you know techniques or econometric techniques through which actually you can detect the a uh, uh, heteroscedasticity problem and after detections we should look for the kind of you know solution so in this lectures we like to use different techniques to detect the heteroscedasticity and then look for the kind of you know solution as per the particular you know requirement so now uh, uh, coming to the detection of you know heteroscedasticity so there are two ways in general first you know uh, It, it is the informal way which is done through graphs and therefore we call as you know graphical methods or you know uh, visualization mechanism which we have already discussed in the last lecture in the second case in the second case so that's what the first mechanism through graphical structure and then second case so we have actually very much stand, standardized you know test structure that's what called as you know formal test to detect the heteroscedasticity and we have actually number of you know uh, such kind of you know tests formal tests are there and to check the level of you know heteroscedasticity like you know uh, uh, bruce uh, pagan's uh, lm test glazer lm test uh, uh, harbe godfrey test park test white test spearman rank correlation test gq test so there are so many tests are there which can help you to detect the heteroscedasticity Uh, and then uh, like to quantify whether it is actually statistically significant or not so uh, there may be a chance of inheritability if it is not statistically significant so we will not you know uh, um, you know bother about it but if it is coming statistically significant then we should actually see how is the kind of you know uh, solutions or, uh, until unless you solve that particular items you should not you know use this model for the prediction and the kind of you know and decision making process so let's have the kind of you know uh, uh, you know view uh, on this contest so first we'll start with you know all, all more or less you know uh, you know all these tests are you know uh, very similar kind of you know things uh, because it is the game of you know deriving error term and checking the pattern of the error term and uh, uh, graphically we have uh, just you know visualize and when you are using graphical methods then you need not require to connect with any test or you know connect with any of the kind of you know mechanisms but uh, when you use formal test so 
So, there is a lots of you know mechanisms are there to process and then uh, uh, see the kind of you know results about the atherosclerosity. So, this is what the plotting which you have already discussed and uh, uh, plotting of you know o o error term with respect to either y or you know x. So, that means technically a uh, first hand process is to have the estimated line get the error term. So, now look the behavior of the error term that is the first requirement. In the second requirement if you go by formal mechanism then you can connect the movement of the error term with respect to dependent variable or with respect to independent variable. So, that means we like to check whether the error term is having some kind of you know uh, typical relationship with the independent variable or dependent variable that to if the formal mechanism is concerned to detect the atherosclerosity. So, that is what here actually. So, we are just plotting the behavior of the error term that is the behavior of the error term means it is the behavior of the uh, variance of the error terms not simply the error term uh, uh, it is uh, the because we are looking for you know a variance fact component uh, to just uh, declare the homoscedacity or the heteroscedacity that is why we have to plot the error variance instead of simply error terms right and this is what the equal spread you know diversifying we have already uh, checked this in the last class and this is against uh, not actually very much diversifying, but uh, it is uh, going a little bit volatile and then uh, it is in a kind of you know standard you know confidence interval, but still there is a heterosclerosity because the confidence interval uh, for this you know movement is very high technically. So, that is that is what the kind of answer it is also uh, presence of a heterosclerosity. Here, uh, uh, the movements are uh, movements are actually not so high. It is in a kind of you know similar uh, com confidence interval, but ultimately what is happening? So the variance of these plottings you know following a particular you know pattern, and if that is the case, then this is the clear cut signal about the heterosclerosity involvement. Si similarly, this is also case. This brings the functionality of you know exponential function. So, that means it follows a particular you know pattern. So, the moment error variance follows a particular pattern, if it is a constant then it will be in a line only either in horizontally or you know vertically. So, it will be in a kind of in a line that is what the kind of you know uh, requirement, but ultimately when these variance will be behaving in some kind of you know patterns like you know uh, a, a, in a kind of you know declining trend or you know increasing trend and uh, different look all together like this case. So, then by default this is the clear cut signal that you know there is a heteroscedacity problem. And uh, if you go by formal processing and then the first method is you know BP test and here so what we are doing actually the step 1 is to apply OLS get the estimated equation and use the estimated equation to have the residuals then square the residuals and uh, have the kind of you know uh, molding further. So, what we are doing actually? it is a very simple uh, mechanism here. So, get the error term and square the error term and then connect the uh, error terms with all the kind of you know independent variables that is that is the case here actually. So, ultimately so uh, this is the error variance and then square of the error terms that is uh, you know taking uh, you know that is uh, uh, where we are actually using for the you know further processing to detect the heteroscedacity and these are all actually different variables that is what the step 2 process. After running this model, so you will get actually R square as usual and then we will use Langerhansian multiplier test that is technically called as a LM test and which is nothing but actually n multiplied by R square that is coefficient of determination and n is the sample size and this this particular test follows the pattern called as you know chi square distribution. So, you can go to the chi square table with the p minus 1 degrees of freedom then you will get the tabulated value. So, now here we have actually calculated value just compare you know tabulated value with the calculated value at a particular probability level. If the calculated value will overtake the tabulated value and then by default we are rejecting the true null hypothesis and declaring that you know there is a heteroscedacity. So, our null hypothesis to test the particular process is that you know there is no heteroscedacity in the estimated model, but ultimately if we go by this particular rule and rejecting the particular offer then by default the declaration is that you know 
there is a heteroscedacity and that to the heteroscedacity will be statistically uh, you know significant. So, the moment the level of uh, uh, heteroscedacity uh, signal is statistically significant, so we, we by default will need actually solution. So, that may be a restructuring of the models, the entire process or the kind of you know, data or whatever may be this. So, it means we will go by trial and error mechanism then uh, we will continue the process because it is a very, very much iterative process and continuous process. So, uh, every process you can you know restructure then re-estimate have the output check the heteroscedacity level of heteroscedacity and check the significance level then you will stop at a particular point of time where uh, there may be heteroscedacity completely removed or if not heteroscedacity will be there at a minimum level but it should not be statistically significant that is what the requirement is all about. Okay, so, oh, with this you know this is BP test likewise we have a couple of tests this is a laser test. So, this is also similar mechanism and more or less same so what I have already mentioned. So, here what is happening we are actually connecting square of the error terms now we are here actually modeling modulus of the error terms that means when you derive error term by default some of the error term will be positive some of the error term will be negative that is why mean of the error term is exactly equal to 0. Okay. So, and if it is actually normal case or homocentricity case then by default uh, 50 percent of the error terms will be a left of the left of the estimated line and 50 percent of the error term will be right of the you know estimated lines or 50 percent will be the up and 50 percent will be the down. So, then by default they will tie and as a result the final result will be 0. So, if that is the case, so then uh, you know uh, the declaration is that you know u follows normally distributed with you know 0 mean and unit variance. If that is not the case, then by default there will be a heteroscedacity problem. So, that means technically here what we are doing? we are having the error term then take the modulus because if you do not take the modulus then there is high chance the sum will be exactly equal to 0. Uh, so, as a result so we will take the modulus standardize then you know go for the estimation and again it follows the uh, LM test and it is more or less same. So, you calculate with you know n multiplied by coefficient determination then connect with the chi square tabulated value and then look for whether uh, you know rejecting the true null hypothesis where uh, the formulation of H0 is that there is no heteroscedacity and the moment you are rejecting then there is a heteroscedacity. So, that is what the kind of you know check process uh, uh, about the LM test. So, likewise you can actually uh, look for you know uh, further processing here also uh, this uh, HG LM test that is again more or less same. So, what we have done earlier. So, one case it is uh, uh, u square of the error term u square and this is the modulus of the error terms uh, to avoid the uh, positive and negative signs and again see here we are going for you know square of the error term and then we are taking the log transformation. Sometimes when you go for log transformation and uh, by default the level of you know volatility or you know the kind of heteroscedacity will be minimized and your model accuracy will be very high and this may give you this detailed signal about the heteroscedacity and homoscedacity. So, by default here also same uh, you know like a, a last case I have mentioned that you know they are more or less same. So, again it is a LM test case and uh, this gives the signal that you know uh, uh, you know the process through which you can you know detect the heteroscedacity. So, like you know every test is a actually a similar kind of you know structure and this is a part test uh, here actually again we are connecting a log u square with you know uh, uh, other independent variables and again it follows the uh, Langerhans multiplier test to check the significance level. And there is also Spearman uh, rank correlation test where uh, what we can do we uh, observe the error term and then uh, we use actually called as you know rank correlation mechanism. So, we first you know uh, take the modulus and then uh, rank the error terms and then we can compare with the any of the independent variable and then rank the uh, rank the data of the x variables then connect the rank of the error terms and rank of the uh, independent variable and calculate the rank correlation coefficient and that rank correlation coefficient need to be tested 
टू सी फेदर देयर इज ए प्रेजेंस ऑफ एट्रस कैपेसिटी और एब्सेंस ऑफ इन एट्रस कैपेसिटी एंड नाउ दिस इज मच बेटर टेस्ट कॉल्ड एज एंगल्स आर्च टेस्ट ऑटो रिग्रेसिव कंडीशनल हेट्रस कैपेसिटी टेस्ट सिंपली वेरिएंस ऑफ यूटी हियर इज एक्चुअली डिपेंड्स ऑफ यू नो स्क्वायर टी माइनस 1 लाइक यू नो कंप्लीटली यू नो लाइक योर ऑटो कोरिलेशन वेयर वी आर कनेक्टिंग यूटी अपॉन यूटी माइनस 1 मींस लाइक इन द केस ऑफ ऑटो कोरिलेशन वी आर कनेक्टिंग यूटी एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ यू नो यूटी माइनस 1 सो हियर वी आर कनेक्टिंग सिग्मा स्क्वायर यूटी इज इक्वल टू फंक्शंस ऑफ सिग्मा स्क्वायर यूटी माइनस 1 दैट्स द केस एक्चुअली and uh, if you find there is a kind of no relationship then by default the declaration is that you know there is a heteroscedasticity if if uh, there is no such you know you uh, know kind of no significance uh, in the systems then declaration is that you know it's a case of you know heteroscedasticity homoscedasticity so that means technically it's the game of the error term sometimes we are connecting error term to error term so we are connecting error term with the independent variables dependent variables then variance of the error term with its log component like you know this case then finally a, a you know we want actually whether the particular model is free from this particular virus that's what the heteroscedasticity if not then uh, the the, uh, the simple uh, uh, the requirement or you know good requirement is that there is a presence of you know homoscedasticity that's what the uh, need of you know equal variance so they are very close to each other and there is no uh, you know kind of you know spread at all or you know very minimal levels of this spread that's what called as you know a closely equal variance over the time and over the cross sectional unit so now the case is like this uh, similarly this is step by step process again same lm test can be used and the check is there so this is another way of you know gq test to check the particular process here what is happening uh, the end after getting the error terms you can divide the uh, level of you know sampling into two parts and in between uh, you can remove few of the samples uh, like you know here the case like critical value which you have mentioned here so uh, this is what actually so uh, you know c means actually the item which you are actually removing in between process for instance let's say this is a data set and this is the data set and what we can do we can put in a kind of in ascending to descending order with respect to one particular variable by default other data will be adjusted and then you divide the data into two parts let's say it's a 80 data points then we can take actually first 30 data points and last 30 data points and remove the 20 data points and you can build the model separately here and we can build the model separately here then in this models we will have rss1 that's what here and in this case we fit the models and you get the rss2 okay so there is no i mean it's not necessarily that you know this sample and this sample will be uniform it can be have a different sample but uh, uh, how many points you can actually omit that you have to declare properly so as a result uh, uh, you know uh, in this first uh, you know clustering you will get residual sum of square and then we declare rss1 and here we will get residual sum of square we will declare rss2 and then we will we will we will create a statistic which is the ratio between rss1 by rss2 and then connect with you know f criticals uh, with the adjustment of the you know removal of this you know in data points and if the calculated will overtake the tabulated then the declaration is that you know there is a you know uh, uh, heteroscedasticity and if not the, then there is a kind of you know homoscedasticity this is again very interesting test through which you can actually check and you know validate the kind of you know results so that means there are lots of formal tests are there uh, to check the heteroscedasticity that means uh, from the types of you know test you can just guess that you know this could be the you know very dangerous virus Uh, while using e any kind of you know models with heteroscedasticity for any kind of you know decision making process otherwise there may not be you know lots and lots of you know uh, informal and formal tests are there to check the uh, you know level of heteroscedasticity or to declare the kind of you know homoscedasticity so uh, obviously this is a problem case we like to check we like to detect we like to you know quantify 
then check the statistical levels and then finally, if the requirement means if there is any kind of a requirement then you can restructure the entire process and then uh, trans, uh, transfer or have the model in such a way that you know that model can give you know uh, good uh, for good results and that to for as per the kind of you know uh, decision making requirement or any kind of you know, engineering requirement. So, likewise, so this is another test, uh, white test is also there, uh, this is another kind of you know test where you know we we are using actually a non-linear structures compared to all these tests where we use actually linear structure by just connecting u with you know other variables, but here is the interesting part of this you know white test is that. So, what we can do here, uh, uh, you see here we are just taking the square of the error term, then there are two independent variables x 2 and x 3 and we are again uh, you know including the kind of you know uh, what we can call as you know dot product that is square of this particular first variable, square of this second variables and then they are cross product. So, that means x square 2 and x square 3 and then x 2 x 3. So, the both these three uh, and this this were the kind of you know uh, uh, structure. So, in this case we are using the nonlinearity setup to check the particular you know uh, uh, issue that to declaration of the homoscedacity or you know heteroscedacity. And compared to other models this is more interesting because uh, uh, in other models we use actually linearity structure and in this model we are using actually non-linearity structure. But by the way the overall conclusion is that you know whether there is a kind of you know heteroscedacity, if not what is the level of heteroscedacity and whether it is in at the level of tolerance or against the tolerance. So, we will check and accordingly we can restructure as per the particular requirement and as per the decision making requirement. So, likewise we will you know uh, use a different test to know the level of heteroscedacity and the kind of you know solutions as per you know the particular you know engineering problem requirement. So, what we can do here is uh, whatever test we have discussed till now to check this particular heteroscedacity and the kind of you know modeling requirement, I can connect here with a particular you know problem which we have already discussed in the case of you know autocorrelation, the same problem here. Uh, what we can do here is we can connect with you know sales and you know advertising expenditures and first we estimate the model and have the error terms and after getting the error terms. So, you can create you know lag of the error terms and variance of this error terms. So, when you are connecting error term with lag error terms then that's, that will give you the signal about the autocorrelation. Now, what what is actually happening here is we are just squaring the error term and checking the behavior of that particular error terms. And uh, if, if the error term behavior is actually coming actually close or you know convergent convergent to each other over different point of time over different cross sectional units, then the declaration is that you know there is a homoscedacity. If not, then the declaration is actually heteroscedacity. To simplify, so I'll I'll connect the you know last class problems and uh, this word the actually first and uh, uh, data uh, inputs and uh, dependent variables independent variables and we have here estimated results and this word the estimated re results and the model is actually very good which we have already discussed yesterday that means uh, the specification test uh, you know gives the green signal then the uh, gft is also giving good signal and what is we are actually checking here the diagnostic part and that to the previous case we have seen there is a kind of an autocorrelation and to do that. So, what will you do? We just derive the coefficients and uh, then we take to, uh, take to this unknown data set and using this coefficients we will have the estimated equation and after putting this estimated equation you can actually just scroll it and then get the kind of you know. Uh, estimated you know uh, data set. Now, we have actual actual cells and we have estimated cells and the difference will give you the error components. What we have used earlier, so with the error terms we create a lag error term and then trying to check whether there is a relationship between u t and u t minus 1. 
Now, in this particular case, particular you know heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity case, so we will just create you know here a ut square and then uh, the only thing is that you know this need to be actually simply square of these terms or you can simply take the modulus and uh, again same. So, what you can do again you can create a spreadsheet here. So, just you just use uh, do it ok. So, this will be give you ok. So, the just uh, the, this will give you actually u, a u to ut squares and just scroll it. So, you will get actually ut square data sets. So, now uh, uh, with respect to autocorrelation, we are connecting u ut with you know created ut minus 1. Now, in this heteroscedasticity, we are connecting uh, ut, then we have deriving ut squares. Now, the connection will be ut square with any of the independent variable, let us say advertising expenditures. Now, we can connect advertising expenditure with error terms and then check whether the you know particular parameters are statistically significant. That means, technically, so what will you do here? So, this is a square of the error terms. So, our square of the error terms that is ut squares should be connected with a, a, a you know advertising expenditure that is the x variable. So, the model will be beta 0 plus beta 1 uh, uh, x t. So, where x t represents the advertising expenditure. Now, uh, the null hypothesis is that you know beta 1 should not be should be statistically significant. If that is the case, then we can reject the null hypothesis and declaration is that you know there is a heteroscedasticity problem. So, likewise you know different test can be applied. Sometimes we take the modulus of you know error terms, then connect with the independent variables, then sometimes you can take the square of the error terms, then connect with the error, uh, independent variable. Sometimes you can use the square of the error term, then create the lag of the error terms. For instance, u t minus 1, you can create here uh, uh, u t squares t minus 1 and then you can connect with the independent variable and check the significance levels. If that is the case, then there is a presence of heteroscedasticity and if heteroscedasticity is there, so we simply cannot use this model for the decision making process. So, again there is a need of you know, restructuring, restructuring of the entire process and you continue like you know iterative process uh, till you get the model which is free from all these virus and that to specifically the heteroscedasticity. And with this we will stop here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.